Hello, this is Sally from Launch Code, and today we're going to start building our HelloASP.NET application and talking a little bit about controllers and their role in MVC web applications. So to get started, we need to make a new project in Visual Studio. I'm just going to go over here and hit new. Now I have been working a little bit with ASP.NET applications, so it is in my recently used templates, but if it is not for you, Make sure that you are picking from .NET Core, ASP.NET Core, and that you always select the option for Model View Controller. We want to make sure we are selecting this option because we are building web applications that use the Model View Controller design pattern, and these web applications are going to come pre-configured to use that design pattern. So I'm going to select it here, hit Next. I'm ready to name my project. We're going to call it hello ASP.net. I'm just going to put my application where I've been putting all my classwork here in this little classwork folder and hit create. Now Visual Studio is going to create a new project for me. And this application comes pre-configured to follow that MVC design pattern and use a number of different tools and things straight out of the box. So let's explore. I'm going to click over here. I have a controllers directory. There's already a controller in it. It's called home controller. I can already see it also has a lot of code in it. So I'm going to go ahead and run this application and see if it works. So just hit run. It's going to build. I have my browser open already, so it should just open a new window or tab in that browser to run this application. And here it is running at localhost 5001, helloasp.net. All right, so the application works straight out of the box, and it is coming to us pre-configured to make use of conventional routing. There are two routing systems in ASP.NET Core MVC, one of which is conventional routing and the other one is attribute routing. We're going to start with conventional routing here. Conventional routing follows the same general pattern in the path. That pattern is slash controller name slash action name. The public methods in a controller class are called action methods. That is what we are referring to. So the action method name is the action name. Controller name is the controller name. So if I go over to Visual Studio, I'm going to leave my application running. I can see that inside home controller, there is a public method here. This is an action method called index. For me, it's on line 21. It is returning a view. We will get to views in a couple lessons, so stay tuned for that. But if I want to see the result of the action method index, I need to navigate to the route localhost 5001 slash home, home being the controller name, slash index, index being the action name. So I am going to go ahead and do that now. I'm just going to find my Chrome here. There we go. So slash home, home is the controller name, slash index for the action name. And the index method is returning a view, which is apparently this beautiful home page here. All right, and now that we know that it's pre-configured to make use of conventional routing, we can add controllers, we can add action methods to those controllers, and when we run our application, we can see the result of those action methods at that route by following that same pattern, slash controller name, slash action name. So I'm going to go back to Visual Studio here, stop the application, and I'm going to go ahead and do just that and add a new controller to my application. Right click. I'm going to select to add a new class. I want to make sure that I am choosing ASP.NET Core and that I am choosing a controller class. I need to give it a name. Hello controller. And there it is. All right. 
One thing to notice here is Hello Controller extends the controller class. By doing this, we have access to different members and methods that we may need from that controller class over there. And the first method here already is index. Now we want to make sure that our index method here returns a simple string of HTML that's just gonna say hello world. So I'm going to remove what's inside this method. And I'm going to declare a new variable. And inside of this string, I'm just gonna put an h1 tag, hello world. A closing tag. All right, so now we have a string of HTML and I need to return something. This method isn't returning anything anymore. So my return type, if I look up on line 14 is I action result. I action result is actually an interface and when we use that as a return type, we can return any number of things such as HTML templates, JSON, or in our case, we want to return some simple HTML. I'm going to use a class called content. HTML. Now I can see up here with my Visual Studio that I need to give it whatever I want to return. In this case, I want to return that variable HTML that I declared one line above it. And I need to give it a content type. Content can be used to return plain text. It could be used to return JSON. And we want to make sure that it knows that it is returning HTML. So I'm just gonna type in here text slash HTML. And then a semicolon. And this method looks like it's ready to go. One other thing to note here, this comment gives you information about what kind of HTTP request that this method should be responding to we're thinking about it responding to a GET request, and it includes the route that it will be responding at. These comments are really helpful, not just for you, but your fellow programmers. So definitely keep adding these comments as you add new action methods, explaining what kind of request types you see this method responding to, and what route you see this method responding at. I'm gonna save my file. And I'm going to go ahead and hit run here. All right, my application is running. It's opened up in a new tab. I'm gonna close the old tab. Now, what we learned is conventional routing follows a pattern. So if I wanna see the result of the index method in hello controller, I need to give it the controller name slash hello, and I need to give it the method name or the action name, and that is index. And here it is, a simple string of HTML that simply says hello world, Congratulations, this is hello world and MVC, but we wanna take it one step further. We wanna make use of the other routing system in ASP.NET Core MVC known as attribute routing. So let's go ahead, stop the application and see how we can add attributes to this index method. There we go. So we're gonna add attributes. Attributes in C-sharp lie somewhere between code in comments, and I want to add two attributes to this action method. I want to add an HTTP verb attribute specifying the request type. I see in the comment above the index method that I'd like this method to respond to a GET request. However, with conventional routing, you don't get to specify just one request type you want it to respond to, so we need to get really specific here and say to the index method, you only will respond to GET requests. So I'm going to add an attribute here to this index method that says you will only respond to get requests and to do so I use square brackets and I say HTTP get and then the other attribute I want to add here is a route attribute. Now we know the route that the index method will respond at through conventional routing but if I want to give that route a slightly different path I can use a route attribute to do so. So I'm just gonna type in here route, parentheses, 
And then in these double quotes, I need to give the path information. So slash hello world. You'll see that path is very much different from what we learned in conventional routing, which is it needs to follow a pattern. This doesn't use that same pattern, but if we are working with users that we want them to use our site, slash hello world may be more informative as part of our URL than just slash hello slash index. So time to rerun it and let's see what happens. All right, it's opening a new tab. We've got to close the old tab. Slash, hello world. And there it is again, that same string of HTML, hello world. All right, so there it is, hello world. We've built our hello world application using ASP.NET Core MVC. We've added a new controller. We added a new action method to that controller. And we made use of both conventional and attribute routing in ASP.NET Core MVC. So congratulations, and we'll see you in the next video.